Right, let's get rid of this. So yes, last one of the year, so nice and easy. Couple of slow, gentle breaths. As you settle in, if you want to focus on your breathing, then just see how, or if really, your body adjusts to, to a slightly deeper breathing. As I've said before, sometimes it, it can work that way around. And as you get used to the various elements, things like the posture and the breath and so on and so forth, having the intent to, for instance, breathe a little bit deeper may, may, may actually trigger the changes that, that, that you want to make. So there's many ways in to this posture and this movement, and the whole process. And it's not always going to be the same each day. And as I was saying last week, you know, it's good to sometimes sit back and just consider your, um, your what, what do you need, as it were, the, rather than what should I be doing or concentrating on, but what is it, you know, what, like, how are you feeling, tired, achy, lively, whatever. So, so you know, what's, you know, What's the the outcome that, that that you would like? Just gently taking your attention through the body, feet up through your calves to your knees. Trying to make sure that your knees have got that slight softening in them. And that they're not going too far forward, so roughly above the balls of your feet. And then a slight angle backwards, your thighs going up into your hips, hips roughly above your ankles. And the feeling of dropping through your hips, through your pelvis, so you're just resting on something. A long feeling through your back and your spine. You've got that downward pull through your hips, lower back. Arranging your head, just drawing your chin in, feeling the upward movement through the back of your head. And in between this, almost like someone who's gently spreading your back out. The shoulders in line with your hips. This is, this is one of the most tricky things about the, 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 the sort of posture, I think, is that it's a generalization. We have a tendency to do this, lean back is exaggerated for most people. So when we go from this to this, when we've got that more upright position, there's this message from the brain telling us that we're going to this. So it takes quite a while to to, to, to overcome that, I had to, I, I had to sort of stop and think about this. And you know, if my teacher put me in for a particular position, I had to stop and think, right, this is how it should feel. Um, and you know, th this is how it should be uncomfortable in a sense. Um, obviously, that's, you know, hopefully that's a short term thing, but you know, all right, so I should feel as though I'm leaning slightly forward, but not too far. And, so on and so forth. And then a couple of months later, the head moved me back the other way and things. That's, that's sort of part of the course. The front of your body supported by your back, but not, not just sort of hanging loosely with a certain amount of elastic muscle tone there. 
feeling the movement coming from your hips, building up through your body. So as you make this little movement in your hips, you feel a, a movement in your ribs, and then in your shoulders. Shoulders dropping down, the arms feeling quite heavy, not rigid in your elbows or your wrists or the joints of your fingers. But at the same time, as I probably said before, so the, the hand there, it's not, it's not out tight, but neither is it just curled in. There is this, this sort of line through the shoulder and out. It's not a, it's not a straight line. Not rigid in that sense, but if you were to take a line down the middle of the arm and out through the fingers, then it, 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 it would be fairly straight. Your head, still with your chin pulled in, can rest on your shoulders. If everything else is in line. Then it's like you know, if, you, if you stack up a series of shelves, so using bricks or something like that, if each one is level, then the one above it is more likely to be level. And if at the top of the shelf you, you just rest the ball on it, then you steady the ball and go away, the ball will stay there. Whereas if it's slightly tilted, it will roll off, of course. And in the same way, you know, presume the floor that you're standing on is fairly level, your knees are on a level, your hips, you know, let's say the solar plexus, the ribs, the shoulders, and therefore, in theory, just allowing your head to rest on top of the spine, on top of the shoulders, without straining in your neck. And try not to hold a, an expression with your face. We're sometimes encouraged to just let the jaw drop a little bit and the lips part. And that's quite difficult. Jaw, the, the jaw bone can get very, very tight. But there's this slightly kind of saggy quality, I suppose. Again, I'm, I'm using words like that because actually that's how it can feel. So we can, we can get into posture and actually, although it looks good from the outside, it feels like we're kind of good, we're kind of drooping. So we... We, we, we kind of pull back up again. I, I felt myself do it when I've been corrected. I've corrected other people who, who, who have done it and so on and so forth. But we gradually have to change that internal picture that we, that, that we have of ourselves, which is quite tricky and it's a long-term process. And I suspect an ongoing process because change is just the nature of the universe, isn't it? So, that there will always be that change taking place. But again, we start to get a, a sense of the outcome of this, that the feel, the quality of the movement, and, and that becomes our guide, our intent. And then just raising your arms. And let your hands drop down. So, let your hips drop a little bit. Bring your hands around as though you're cradling the ball and pushing up. And So you're moving through water.
So that nice steady rhythm, from expansion to contraction to expansion, contraction. And then Marcus. And part of the past. We commonly lose that alignment of, of the body when our hands go above our shoulders. This is a frequent error we get to here. And then we sort of lean back slightly. Really, you know, if you think about it, if I just do this with one hand, this is the natural circumference that my hand will trace. So we don't need to get to here and then go, oh, I'm going to go higher. <laughs> If you see what I mean, just feel it's, it's as though you're feeling out the space rather than trying for maximum stretch. Let's go back to the first and let's do these in a little sequence of three. Again, feeling that steady, regular rhythm working through you.
one more round of this. Take your time. Notice if there's a, a pick up of the speed, a sort of subconscious urge to rush. And just try and be clear about the pattern. In one way or another, it might be sort of where the arms are going or something like that. Or again, just you know, the point at which expansion changes to contraction and vice versa, when yin yang change at the bottom and the top of the circle. And then from the bottom, drag and pluck the stars from the sky. That slight pause as your attention gently transfers from one side of your body to another. A moment when everything settles. And of course, the, the pattern of yin yang is taken from the sort of things that we see around us. It was done by observation. This is a, the planet around us, or part of the planet we're in. This is a moment of pausing. It's the sort of bottom end of the year, as it were, the winter solstice and so on. So it's appropriate to the time to really emphasize that. One more on each side. Good, and then changing. One more round after this.
and then changing again remember here if my hand comes around straight down in front so when i go to do the turn that's where the hand rests i turn the body and then down what you may find is just as a a natural response to the turning not causing any stiffening or strain, but when you get here, you may find the arm just comes over a little bit more after a while. Don't force that to happen, but it's a, it is a fairly natural thing to happen to people with experience in Tai Chi, that the arm just changed sides there. Your, your arm just naturally responds to the, the movement, the energy coming up from the center of your body. So any kind of direction, as it were, from that area is felt through your arm and responded to by your, your arm with just a little bit of movement. Now row in a boat in the middle of the lake. One more time. And then polishing the table. One more. And just that. Check. Let's do a stretch in between heaven and earth. So we haven't done that one for a while. So but back into the hip width stance. Sink down just a little bit. Hands in front of you. So you push up. Do an extension through the upper body between the hands, and then 
back to the same path and on the other side. You can begin to transfer your weight And then stepping in, And raising the leg if you wish to. Shake out. Stretch and pain every minute. Fair play. So, moving body, a little bit of a swing through your hips. It's almost as though you're sort of drawing a circle with the hips and things. So if I put my hand on my hip, you'll be able to see more easily. See that I'm exaggerating, but the pattern that my hand, hand is making is, is a sort of circular pattern. And it would be the same on the, 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 the other side. Actually, that's quite, you could try this. Just put your hands on your hips like this and you'll feel the movement. We've done this, this kind of thing. We've built into this exercise before with hands on the shoulders, but this might help because all you've really got to do from here 
is move the hand forwards here, there, and just keep the movement following. So we're just making that circular movement a little bit bigger, but still very much connected to your hip. It's like there's a little bit of an, an elastic thread from your hip to the palm of your hand. And so you're able to let your hand move out of, move away from your hip a little bit, but not too far. Nice and soft in your back. This time, just finish the one that you're on and again, come back to start. Check out. One foot forward, then. Transferring your weight. Try and feel the springiness in your legs. Give yourself that chance just to load the spring, as it's sometimes referred to. I think it's quite a useful image actually, loading the spring. Give me a moment, I'll get to the later. Described it in the past as a slight pause, we're just waiting for that push up. And then raising your toes and heel. And stepping in.
and then the other side. And then raising your toes and your heel. And then stepping in. And step through. And back. Extending the idea of the springs into, first of all, our back and, and then into to, to our arms. So I, you might want to exaggerate this to, to begin with. Don't go, don't, don't, don't go to, to sort of hard a dip. But when I go back there, if, if I were to angle my, my back right, like this, you, you don't want to do it too much. There's the leg being loaded, but there's a feeling in, in the back of it doing this. A bit like when a cat bunches up to, 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 to jump. And then the, the release comes through the leg and through the spine. This is almost a, an imagined curve, particularly when we're upright, because you don't want the, the, the natural curves in our spines to, 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 to become straight and, and rigid. So it's like, and I've talked about this before, you, you feel the line through there and there. So first spring takes this shape, second spring takes this shape. The third spring is in the arms and we, we, we imagine here, you can imagine pushing your fingers into soft mud, um, but, 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 but one image that is quite good is that you imagine there's a wall in front of you and between your fingertips and the wall, there's, the, the, there's little springs. So when you go forwards, you're pushing into the springs. And then when you come back, you imagine springs turn to sort of elastic bands. And so you're pulling back on, on, on the elastic. So just build it up, have one foot forward and then 
get get the leg moving and see if you can get some kind of sense of movement in your spine. As I say, you can exaggerate it a little bit to begin with. So they sometimes say the back is like a bow, like a bow and arrow, and the leg would be the same. And when you've got that feeling, then just bring your body back to the upright stance by letting your hips drop back. You'll still feel that sense of compression. In fact, you might even be able to see it if I come a bit closer there. If I'm, if I'm upright here, if I go back and then let both spring, yeah, you can just see a certain amount of movement. So, for instance, the curve in the small of your back becomes a lot more shallow. And then your hands in front of you. You're not going to let your elbows go behind your body. So here, as, as you go forward, the back releases and the arms release. And then when you come back, you're loading the spring in your arm, in your back and spine, and in your legs. And then the release comes, legs back, and then the arm. We're using quite strong imagery here. Eventually, of course, you want to sort of move beyond that image of three separate parts of the body. And that comes, I think, through the experience of movement. The movement, the different parts of the body will naturally begin to blend for you. Another thing that can happen is you imagine little elastic bands between your fingers so that as you go forwards, the fingers spread out a little bit. That's exaggerated a bit and then contract as you come back. You feel that in the palm of your hand. So again, we have this expansion of the, the, the body from the ground outwards and then a contraction back into the ground. This is an exercise and a set of imagery taken from each one, mind boxing, the sister art to Tai Chi. One that really emphasizes, particularly in its early stages, the use of these different images and ideas, hence the name. Now just see if you can make the transition from this to push, pushing the wave or pushing the boat without losing that sense of transmission through the body. This is quite tricky. The more we try and do with our arms, the, the more likely we are to, to break that cycle of movement. But you can see it's the same kind of idea that the arms, it's not that the arms don't move at all, 
they're a set of springs, but they're not going to do this. But as soon as we start to create a shape with the arm, as we've just started doing, it's, it's almost as though we, we lose touch with what's happening in, in the rest of the body. I know I've done it, and I've seen people do it countless times. You know, we want to be doing an exercise like this, and people are doing it just fine. They're getting that, they've got the movement, and then you say, okay, let's go into this, and suddenly they're standing there doing, doing that. It's very tricky to actually maintain that focus of attention on a model like Three Springs or whatever model is working for you. And at the same time, apply yourself to what well, can be quite complex patterns. Especially since our arms and our hands are easily the most visible part of Tai Chi and Qigong. One more time. And let's do repulse the monkey. Here, of course, the turning of the center is also a way of winding up that middle spring. That's something that is quite characteristic of Tai Chi rather than each one, which tends to be quite linear. One more round. Let me shake out. So have your other foot forwards and start with that same exercise. Remember the image of pushing against the springs, pulling against the elastic bands. You're using your whole body that effect. So the movement in your spine, it's not, you, know, you, you could think of the spine maybe not as one large curve, 
in the, in the back, not as one large curve in the way that I described, but of two or maybe three smaller curves. So and when you talk about a bow, you think they have recurved bows, don't they? And things like that. So different ways you can play with the image. But always remember the image is there to help you experience the movement, not to dictate the movement. And then pushing away. And we post the monkey. And then, okay. So rubbing your hands together. Tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. One shoulder. Um, side. Is your back? Your hips. Nice on your belly. Right. So a year on Zoom doing Tai Chi, who'd have thought it? <laughs> so it's a changing world, isn't it? And as um, the, the great and recently late regrettably, Dan Doherty says it's, it's the martial art of change. So yeah. So best wishes to you all. Many thanks for the support over the, the, the last year and have a good break. Um, keep safe, hopefully, yeah, uh, in these slightly difficult times. We'll be back 
um, on the 10th of January in, in these classes. I will be doing, uh, I, I will send stuff out bit, bit, bit before then, of course. I think the, the um, I think the Monday is, is going to be a bank holiday, isn't it? So um, I'm not actually planning to start up until Tuesday, uh, sorry, Wednesday will, will, will be my first sort of day back working, but that, that there won't be any Zoom sessions at that point, but there will be on um, Thursday. So that by, by Thursday, we'll be back to the normal routine. So in, as I say, enjoy your break. And we'll finish with Embrace Tiger Return to Mountain as usual, which always feels at this time of year like what we should be doing. <laughs> This, this idea that we've you know, this 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 kind of like the uh, dropping of the year in into the, the the winter solstice and the time that at least I think should be quite kind of quiet and and still. So again, just following rhythm as much as anything else, sinking down and then pushing up, feeling the pull of gravity through your body. Making sure you don't strain, so beginning to yield to that. <coughs> Excuse me. And just allowing that pull to bring you back. One more round. And lovely. Thank you very much, both of you. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, Mike. Well, I've enjoyed it the last year. Yeah.